This is the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. Chase Sr. here with you. A lot to unpack and get to on the program, but first, it's all presented by Manscaped. The 49ers offense was atrocious last night, and I'm still bitter and fired up about it. But the Niners defense, they were balling out. If you want to ball out with Manscaped, the leader in the best men's grooming products, we have a great deal for the faithful, 20% off and free shipping if you head to manscaped.com slash 49ers. So we begin the show with this, and it's not good news for San Francisco. Kyle Shanahan saying just moments ago that left tackle, the best left tackle in the game, Trent Williams, has a high ankle sprain. As we talked about last night during our post-game show, appreciate everybody who tuned in on YouTube and calling, and it's going to be out a few weeks. Now, usually the timeline for these high ankle sprains, it does span between four and six weeks. So the point here being Trent Williams is going to be out for a really long time. Shanahan also adding that they really don't know definitively what the timeline is going to be because right now there's so much swelling. As for when it played, uh, when it happened, it was on the Jimmy Garoppolo play in which he pulled off the Dan Orlovsky, ran out of the back of the end zone to cause that safety to really flip the momentum in that football game. An inexcusable loss for San Francisco. We'll get to that here in just a few minutes. And for Trent Williams, for a long time, this guy has been the premier left tackle in the game. That's why he was paid as the highest paid left tackle in the history of the National Football League. He has dealt with some injuries from time to time back in the day with the Washington Redskins and in his 49ers tenure. But the point here being that he was voted as one of the best players in the NFL by his peers. So that right there is certainly notable. And he's been consistently very, very good. This year, 182 offensive snaps. 86 dropping back there in pass coverage, 96 Mullen Cats in the run game, but only one penalty, zero sacks allowed, zero hits allowed, four pressures allowed, and in my opinion, the best player at that position in the NFL. And without him, this is important for a couple of reasons. That's the blind side for Jimmy Garoppolo, who does not have the mobility of a Trey Lance, and the backup, at least initially, was Jalen Moore, the former fifth-round pick out of Western Michigan. He was so bad in four pass snaps in which he gave up two pressures that they had to bench him for Colton McKivitt. So if you read the tea leaves with what the 49ers saw from offensive line coach Chris Forster to Kyle Shanahan, I don't think it's going to be more at left tackle. Ideally, it would be because he's a young guy who this team obviously likes. That's why they drafted him. But Colton McKivitt's the more steady option out there. And throughout training camp, he was getting a lot of reps so that position not new to him. As for the pressures allowed along the 49ers offensive line, they had given up just two the previous week against the Seattle Seahawks. The offensive line, not as good in this game. Spencer Burford, three pressures. Mike McGlinchey, three pressures with some penalties. Jalen Moore, two in four pass snaps. Colton McKivitt's only one. And Aaron Banks continues to be a very pleasant surprise. He gave up just one pressure against Denver. With the injury news to Trent Williams and what we're about to talk about with the Z's Al Shai are the 49ers screwed just in general? They're at one and two. Los Angeles Rams coming up on primetime this upcoming weekend. S for screwed, F for fine. Let me know right now in the comment section. More injury news to get to on the Niners front. Aziz Alshire, an MCL sprain. This is very similar to the injury that happened to Elijah Mitchell, and it's a similar timeline. He could be out up to eight weeks. This, too, also unfortunate because Aziz Alshire last year found himself in the right place at the right time back a couple of years ago, made that huge play against the Seattle Seahawks to lock down that win. Really good instincts at that linebacker spot, but the benefit of what the Niners have done at that linebacking core, they have really good depth. And I actually thought that Demetrius Flanagan Foles last night was a pretty pleasant surprise. Pretty solid size at 6'2", 223. As producer Chug said, it's a hell of a name. It is. And I thought he had a hell of a football game in relief duty. Three tackles, and he was kind of everywhere around the football. So look for him to get more action. Also, Dre Greenlaw, Fred Warner, more on their plate now. We'll see if Marcelino McCrary Ball gets elevated from the practice squad because he, too, did have a good preseason. But Dre Greenlaw is second in the NFL with 16 stops. He had seven stops alone last night on Sunday Night Football against the Denver Broncos. So while you lose Aziz Alshire, you still have Dre Greenlaw, you still have Fred Warner. And again, impressed with what I saw from Demetrius Flanagan Foles. Positive injury news to get to for the Niners. Okay, we'll take that. Jennifer Lee Chan, we know that San Francisco has been top 10 in injuries Every year that Kyle Shanahan has been the head coach, and they're probably on their way to doing that again. Jimmy Ward, 
Jason Verrett eligible to join practice after the Niners week four game coming up against the Los Angeles Rams. Both have a good chance to do that. Both. That is good news right there. Make sure you subscribe to the 49ers report, by the way, before we had this debate about who's to blame, Kyle Shanahan, Jimmy Garoppolo, news, rumors, analysis, live shows, watch parties, interactive, informative content. We like to teach you about the game of football. We like to entertain you as well. I'm not a big J. I look at myself as a broadcaster, and hopefully you guys also enjoy that. Let's get the 64,000 subs faithful. We're 500 people away. Make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below. Coming up next, we're going to embrace debate, and we're going to get some people, of course, who are fired up in the comment section. That's totally fine. Let me pose this question so that you can think about it ahead of time. Who is to blame for last night's loss? I'm giving you two culprits, Kyle Shanahan, Jimmy Garoppolo. I'll ask you that question coming up around the corner, and we'll dive into it. Some pretty telling misses from Garoppolo last night that I do want to get to on the All-22. But as I mentioned off the top of the show, 49ers defense last night, led by Nick Bosa, led by Fred Warner, they were balling. And if you want to take care of your balls like the 49ers take care of their balls because they have their performance package and they are the perfect package on the defensive side of the football in the NFL, do so with Manscaped. All of these great products available for you for just $87.99. It's manscaped.com slash 49ers, promo code 49ers for that deal to apply. Smooth sack summer is slowly coming to an end, fellas. If you haven't been scaping for the summer sun, it's not too late to sweep your sack of those pesky ball hairs as summer comes to an end and we enter fall. Keep those boys down below the belt clean and fresh just in time for fresh ball fall. So we're going from smooth sack summer to fresh ball fall. I love talking ball and I love cleaning up my balls with Manscaped, the best men's grooming products out there. One more time, it's manscaped.com slash 49ers, promo code 49ers for that deal to apply. All right, really the biggest talking point among the faithful. Who's to blame for last night's just awful loss against an incompetent coach, you finally had an opportunity to beat Russell Wilson, and now he's still 17-4 and against this football team. Is it Kyle Shanahan? Is it Jimmy Garoppolo? Let's dive into it. What's frustrating about this loss, and really all of the games so far for San Francisco on the schedule, they've been the better team. They should be 3-0, and yet they have one win to show for it. They outgained the Broncos in total yards pass yards, rush yards. They average more than five yards per play compared to sub four for Denver, yet they still came down with the defeat. And this is starting to become a little bit concerning from the coaching front. Seven penalties and three turnovers. You played a clean slate against Seattle. You dominated that football game. You coughed up the pill in some critical situations against the Chicago Bears. You lost that ball game. And when you lose a turnover battle in the NFL, you lose nearly 80% of the games. So that's monumental. When you cough the pill up, other teams make you pay, and that's what's happened to the Niners in their two losses. That's why they're one and two. There's also been sloppy play offensively, as well as these turnovers. And what I've seen from this Niners offense, and this kind of is a problem throughout the Kyle Shanahan tenure, and by the way, I defended him, but I was ripping him last night, go back and watch the postgame show, is that the Niners offense tends to go a little bit stagnant after the script. So oftentimes in these West Coast type of offenses, what Kyle Shanahan likes to do, what guys around the league like to do, they script out these offensive plays. So the first 15 of them, they go by the script unless the game just goes awry. After that, though, can you make adjustments? And Shanahan has lost leads, and I think the offense at points has gone stagnant after the script. That is on the coach. But as we're about to show you, Kyle Shanahan last night made some really great play calls for Jimmy Garoppolo to execute that he didn't execute that could have turned the tide in this football game to push the Niners record to 2-1 and one with a really impressive win over Denver. Jimmy Garoppolo just missed a lot of these throws. So I'm going to step aside here because this is one of the shot plays that Jimmy Garoppolo has to see. There's somewhat of a clean pocket right here for Jimmy G in this box. He has a clean pocket where he can step up and make the throw. He's looking out here to the left, okay? And that's a problem because you see Debo Samuel all the way out here. He has his hand up, and Garoppolo here isn't even looking at Debo Samuel. He is the number one wide receiver on this team. He has to be the number one read. You call a shot play for Debo, and you're not even looking his way here? That makes absolutely no sense, and it's inexcusable for Jimmy Garoppolo to miss Debo because this right here would have gone for a 55-yard touchdown. 
That's the reality of the situation. And you can't miss those types of plays in a close game if you want to be a playoff caliber team. And this is why Jimmy Garoppolo last night deserves some of the wrath that he's been receiving Sunday into Monday because this is inexcusable for a guy who's played a lot of football. And then there's this other one that Kyle Shanahan drew up. Look how open Debo Samuel is right here. He's wide open. If you hit him in stride, he's taking it to the crib, and that goes for about a 90-yard touchdown. And Garoppolo once again missed Debo Samuel. These are the plays that you cannot miss if you are a long-term starter, starting quarterback who's won 71% of his starts, and that's the problem with Jimmy G. These are layups in the NFL. These are layups in the NFL. And Garoppolo missed them not once, not twice, on multiple occasions. He fumbled that football. He threw that bad interception. Honestly, he could have thrown another one if it wasn't for that batted ball at the line of scrimmage that I believe DJ Jones was in on. And there were a couple of other dangerous throws. And the inaccuracy issues continue to rear its ugly head for Jimmy G. So let me ask you this question. This is our poll question for today's show. Who is to blame for the loss last night? That's 14 points that the Niners left on the field. KS for Kyle Shanahan, JG for Jimmy Garoppolo. Let me know. And if you want to hit me up about this subject matter on social media, you can find me on Twitter and IG at Chase underscore Senior. It is the same handle on both social media platforms. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. I appreciate my boy Chuggy producing because I haven't worked with him in a really long time. And we'll catch you tomorrow live on the Niners Report.